Let's go through the meningeal layers of the brain. You've got three main layers. And so the first one, from superficial to deep, is the dura mater. Then underneath it is the arachnoid mater. And finally, the third layer is the pia mater. So the pia mater is tightly and firmly attached onto the brain and cannot be peeled off, whereas the dura mater is attached onto the bone. Okay, and it gets a bit more complicated than that. So, when we draw it out, this, I'm drawing the dura mater, and the dura mater actually is made up of two particular layers in the brain. You've got an outer layer, which contains the periosteum of the bone, And so that's bone over here. And then you've got an inner layer. And so this is the meningeal layer. Of the dura mater. And what that means is that this is that particular layer that continues on with the spinal cord down and makes the dura mater of the spinal cord, whereas the periosteum over here of the bone, that stays within the bone once the spinal cord leaves. So this particular layer, and it, what's important about it is that these particular two layers separate out like that in certain parts, whereas the menin because the meninges uh, or the dura mater can fold in on itself and create different structures, but you create this particular space as you see here. And this space over here forms, for example, a venous sinus. V, oh, venous sinus. So venous blood can actually fill up in this area and then they drain back into the circulation. So venous sinus. Now that's the dura matter. And then let's move on to the arachnoid matter over here. The arachnoid matter is right underneath the dura matter. So we've got the arachnoid matter like that and it forms underneath here and the thing you need to know probably about the arachnoid matter is more to do with what happens to it in relation to the layer underneath so the layer underneath is the pia matter and as we said earlier this is firmly attached onto the brain. So the arachnoid matter has trabeculations or these projections that go onto the pia matter and in between the arachnoid matter and the pia matter is this very important space called the subarachnoid space. where what there are two main things that are living in the subarachnoid space. First thing are blood vessels. And I guess that's kind of why this layer was called the arachnoid matter because of the blood vessels, they kind of look like spider webs and so arachnoid spider. And that, that's my understanding of why they called it. And um, the next thing is cerebral spinal fluid, C, S, F also resides in the subarachnoid space. So that's the two things you need to know. Subarachnoid space, blood vessels, and CSF. Um, we've got trabeculations, pia mater, and we've gone through all that. One probably final thing we can go through is just what happens to the CSF and where the CSF goes. So we can go through one on, in another video where the CSF is produced, but since we're here already, the CSF actually gets reabsorbed into a venous sinus through a what's called a arachnoid villi or another name for it is a arachnoid granulation so the arachnoid matter comes up I guess something like that and so this gives the CSF an opportunity to flow into the venous sinus and exit the exit the brain cavity so I guess if this is blocked or something bad happens to it, you can have a buildup of CSF, which can cause a compression onto the brain. 
And so that's the uh, that's the three meningeal layers that you need to know. Actually, oh, final one other thing. You've got blood vessels in here, but between the the dura matter again, in between the outer layer and the inner layer, you've also got blood vessels running between them as well, and these are meningeal arteries. Yep. Okay. Cool. And I guess that that's truly it. And uh, thank you once again for watching. Uh, please subscribe to see more videos, and also leave some comments underneath to let me know what kind of other different topics that you'd like to find out about. So, thanks.